Gizalit's subordinates are facing her due to their failed plans. Gizalit appears disappointed by her subordinates' repeated failures. They report that there's a man known as the Black Knight who wiped out a bandit group in Count Gordo's territory. They suspect that he's also the one responsible for decimating the summoning court today. However, Gizalit remains unsatisfied with this explanation. Her subordinates request another chance to rectify their mistakes. Nonetheless, Gizalit suddenly throws the wine she's been drinking at them. She has given them three chances already. After all, she merely tasks them with killing a child. Gizalit does acknowledge that Charlotte could become a threat to her in the future. Given the circumstances, Gizalit decides to handle it on her own. She plans to wield the holy sword she possesses to defeat the Demon King. Suddenly, Gizalit hears a mysterious sound in her throne room. Her subordinates are rendered unconscious with protective magic covering their heads. Of course, the perpetrator is Hart, who is currently disguised as the Black Knight. Gizalit believed that her palace would have multiple layers of protection, making it impervious to infiltration. However, to Hart, these protections are nothing more than playthings he can easily break through. Gizalit is confident in her ability to defeat him and teach him a lesson for disturbing her. Hart is quite surprised to see Gizalit simultaneously invoking three magic circles. Firstly, Hart finds himself trapped within a water sphere, making it hard to breathe. Yet, he manages to escape by leaping using the protective layer he crafted on his feet. Secondly, Gizalit unleashes a series of ice magic attacks, which Hart manages to deflect with his protective barriers. Finally, Gizalit employs an immense fire magic. Hart seems not to dodge or deflect it, choosing to remain still. Following this, Hart is seen kneeling after being struck by her attack. At this point, Gizalit believes she had won. However, Hart stood up again as if nothing had happened. In an instant, Hart launched an attack with his protective magic. While Gizalit managed to deflect it, she had no idea what had struck her. She could only sense the shockwaves. Seeing that Gizalit could still deflect his attack, Hart decided to get more serious. He unleashed a series of stronger consecutive attacks. Gizalit struggled to withstand them all. She felt her magical energy would deplete before his. Even though she fought the Demon King, her strength wasn't as formidable as the Black Knight's. Nevertheless, Gizalit didn't give up. She eventually drew her holy sword. Despite wielding her holy sword, they still seemed evenly matched. Gizalit grew more fervent, declaring herself as the strongest in the world, unmatched in sword combat. Hart considered Gizalit too weak for someone claiming to be the world's strongest. Subsequently, Hart swung his sword, causing Gizalit's sword to be knocked away. Hart decided to punish Gizalit by placing an iron collar around her neck. If the collar is forcibly removed, her neck will be severed. Hart then demanded that Gizalit refrain from interfering with Count Gordo and his family again. He threatened her with harsher consequences if she violated this demand. With Gizalit dealt with, he left the throne room. Outside, Flea was already waiting for him. Since that day, Gizalit never bothered them again. Five peaceful years have passed, and Hart is now almost 15 years old. In Count Gordo's region, the snow has started to fall. Hart, Char, and Flea are outside playing. Hart asks Flea if she's not feeling cold wearing her maid outfit as her daily attire. This outfit is the first clothing Hart gave her. Flea playfully claimed she's not bothered, even though she's actually cold. Well, what can you do? Hart creates winter clothes for Flea to wear. Hart emphasizes that Flea should just let him know if she needs anything. Upon hearing this, Flea takes it quite literally and comes up with 10 requests. Of course, Hart declines. Unexpectedly, Char also has a request. She says she's prepared a finishing move related to the snow. Unfortunately, she can't execute it herself. Naturally, Char asks Hart to do it for her. As usual, Hart feels uneasy turning down Char's request. After being whispered to by Char, Hart starts performing the finishing move. He conjures a snow tornado in his hand, thanks to the assistance of his protective magic. Then, Hart strikes a pose and utters a line like a magician in an anime. He directs the snow tornado into the ground, 
creating a remarkably large hole. Despite feeling very embarrassed, everything feels worth it when he sees Char's happiness. Suddenly, Gordo and Natalia also arrive at the scene. They're surprised to find such a huge hole near them. Char panics at the thought of Hart's identity being exposed because of this. Then, Hart tries something. Using his protective magic, he creates the illusion of the Black Knight passing by coincidentally. Hart explains that the person wants to showcase his finishing move to them. With a resigned expression, Gordo simply accepts Hart's explanation. After that, Hart asked Gordo if there have been any worrying cases recently. Gordo mentioned that for the past five years, no one has targeted Charlotte anymore. He's unsure about what happened to the Queen. Rumor has it that Giselle had hasn't appeared in public for several years now. There's speculation that she suddenly started wearing a necklace resembling that of a slave. Initially, people thought it was just the Queen's hobby, but there are also conspiracy theories suggesting that the Queen accidentally put it on and can't take it off. There's also a theory that someone deliberately put it on her. Hart was thankful for his peaceful days without any disturbances. With this, he believed he could live in seclusion wholeheartedly. He decided to head back to his room. However, Gordo suddenly told him that he must attend school in the capital starting from spring. Gordo tried to refuse, but the situation got complicated. He would explain the details later at their residence. Of course, even before anything, Hart rejected the idea. School is the place he despised the most from his previous life. If the situation was indeed complicated and couldn't be refused, Hart intended to break that situation. Upon arriving at their residence, Gordo once again explained that Hart had to attend school in the capital, starting from spring. In the past, Hart had refused to attend school in this area. However, this time he couldn't decline simply because he didn't want to. Gordo presented a school recommendation letter directly from the king. Gordo also couldn't comprehend why the king chose Hart, but he suspected it had something to do with Princess Marianne. Since her visit for inspection, it seemed like Marianne had taken an interest in Hart. It was rumored that Lyos would skip a grade and also enter that school. Nonetheless, Gordo remained worried. There's a possibility that the queen is planning something and involving Marianne. Given the situation, Hart finally agreed to attend school in the capital. Additionally, Gordo suggested that Hart bring a servant with him. After all, it's difficult to live alone in an unfamiliar place. Unfortunately, he couldn't bring Flay along. Suddenly, Natalia, who had been eavesdropping, volunteered to take care of Hart. The issue is, how can a student attend school with their parents? At least, there's still three months until school starts, so Hart can search for a servant by then. Even though he agreed to attend school, Hart still plans to lock himself in his room. He informs his clone about the school news. As his clone cannot use magic, Hart intends to have it expelled for not being proficient at school. In other words, his plan is to make it seem like the king has misjudged Hart's benefits. His clone protests why the real Hart himself wouldn't do it. Hart feels he would enjoy using his magic to deal with any troublesome students. The clone immediately starts whining, saying it doesn't want to attend school if it will be bullied by other students and unable to fight back. Seeing it behave this way, Hart decides to bestow his clone with protective magic to prevent it from getting hurt. With a somewhat heavy heart, the clone finally agrees to Hart's plan. Hart is currently at a wooden house beside a lake a mountain's distance away from Bordeaux's castle. He built this house over the course of five years as his final retreat. There, no one can disturb him. Hart spends his time playing games on a console he built himself. Suddenly, Char, accompanied by Flea, also arrives at the house. Char is dressed in a costume resembling that of a witch girl. Apparently, she came here to watch the anime Mini Love Cure. While watching it, Char can perfectly mimic the poses and lines of the witch girl. Hart thought Char might be getting tired of the anime since she hasn't been coming to his room lately. However, Char seems to be getting even more into it. These past few days, Char has indeed been learning a lot. That's why she's forbidden to go to her brother's room. From an outsider's perspective, Char appears to be quite spoiled towards her brother. The only way for Char to watch the anime is to ask Flea to bring her here. Suddenly, 
Hart has the idea to use teleportation to arrive directly at this house. He tries to demonstrate his teleportation using a potato. Through one side of his protective magic, Hart inserts the potato until it teleports to the other side of his protective magic. He has mastered it, but he still hasn't tried teleporting living beings. Flea suggests experimenting with his clone. However, for Flea, Hart's clone is something she can take advantage of as much as she wants. Afterward, Hart incorporates teleportation into his protective magic in his room. He instructs his clone to walk through it. But the clone already knows it's being used as a test subject. Suddenly, Flea loses her temper because the clone won't obey. She jumps into the teleportation to drag Hart's clone into it. As can be seen, his protective magic teleportation can be used on living beings. Next, Hart creates a door that, when opened, will pass through his teleportation. Hart suddenly remembers something, he needs to find a servant. But as usual, he'll procrastinate it. 